Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've got an e-commerce site here, a little computer store that we built last year. And if you want to see how to build this, I'll put the playlist below the video. We went to, from scratch to full build. And what we're going to do today is create this fixed position little add to cart button we've got up on the right hand side. As you can see, it stays on the right hand side, fixed position. When they click on it, it'll take them to their shopping cart. There we go. And I've got a little coupon wheel there. I forgot about that. OK, well, let's go back and I'll show you how easy this is to do. The reason we're doing this today is I had an actual question on one of the videos asking how you can link a blurb module icon to your shopping cart. And it's really, really easy. So I'm going to enable the visual builder. And once enabled, we can go down and delete that module. Because it's in fixed position, I'm going to go down and do it in wireframe mode. So I've just clicked on the little purple button in the middle, little wireframe icon here. There we go. And there's my little blur module. OK, let's flip it back to desktop. And let's go and add a button. Now, because we're going to put this in fixed position, it really doesn't matter where we put it. So let's put it just below this button right here, shop now. So I'm going to hit the little cross there to add a new module. Divi comes as standard with all the light gray modules, plenty enough to build just about any site. I've got Divi Supreme Pro installed here, which is giving me these other modules, but we're just using regular Divi modules today. So I'm going to use the blurb module because it's got an icon. OK, obviously put your title in here. And put your content in here. And I'm going to roll down just a little bit. I want to use an icon rather than an image. We've got an image placeholder in there. So I'm going to flip this to on. Here's the elegant themes icon. And let's go down and choose a shopping cart. There's a shopping cart right there. As you can see, it's popped in. The reason mine's purpley pink is that's the default highlight color I've got set up for this Divi theme here. OK, and let's just pop it down a little bit from the button there. So I'm going to go over to design. I'm going to go into spacing. And I'm just going to give it 50 pixels margin on the top, push it down a bit. There we go. Fantastic. OK, so we've got our little blurb module there. How do we connect the icon to the shopping cart? Really easy. If we go back to our content tab, go down to link. You've got a module link and a title link. You don't want the title to just link you there. I'm going to put it in the module. So anywhere around here where they click on it, it'll take us to the shopping cart. So all we need to do is copy our shopping cart link. So up here. Pop the link in our module link URL there. There we go. And we're good. Now if we just save this. It'll take them straight to the shopping cart. Now I thought this would be more fun perhaps if we made it fixed position and had it on the side so it's there all the time rolling up and down our website here. And that's really easy to do also. So let's do that. Let's go back in there. Obviously, you can leave it just as it is if that's what you want. I don't really want a title or any content for this. So if you just want the icon on its own, just delete the title and the content. You're just left with the actual car icon itself. Now, because I'm going to have it rolling over and we've got different colors in the background, I'm going to put a little white background in there just so it shows up on the pink backgrounds if it rolls over. So. To do that, still in the content tab, I'm going to go down to background. I'm going to add a white. I don't want it to be quite as full as that because I want to see things scrolling behind it. So I'm going to click on the color, left click, pull the opacity down. I'm going to take mine down to about 50%, I suppose, something like that. That's great. Now, because this icon is going to be here all the time, I don't want it to be quite as big as that. 
So I'm going to go over to design, image and icon. If we roll down a little bit, icon font size. And here as well, of course, you can change the color and circle it if you want to. I'm going to make mine round, but I'm not going to use that circle feature because I think it looks better the way I'm doing it now. So I'm going to say use icon size. I'm going to take it down to maybe 60 pixels. Obviously, you size yours exactly how you want it. This isn't a standard. I'm just doing it so you can see it on the screen here. That's OK. I think if this was my site, I'd take it down to maybe 50 or even 40. OK, so we've got our white background and we've got the icon the size that we want it, but it's way too large. So let's just go shut this one up image and icon we'll go down to actual sizing right here let's make it say 90 pixels wide so here's width i'm going to say 90. as you can see it's shrunk down to 90 pixels right there looks slightly over to the right there so you can pull it up or increment up till it looks about right to you there we go 93 i think that'll do it by using little arrows right there. Now I'm going to copy the 93 and paste it in the height so it's a square. Obviously you can type it in if you prefer. That's better. Now we want to push this down so it's actually in the middle of our square. So we can close up sizing. Just underneath we've got spacing. Let's give it say 10 pixels padding on the top to push it down. Not quite enough. Again, we'll increment up with the little arrows right there to fine tune it. Yeah, I think that's about right. Great. But I don't want it to be square. I want it to be rounded. So right down below, we got border. And if you've got that little chain check there, as it is by default, just put a high value up here, like 50 pixels. And we've got a little round circle there. Let's just add a little slight bit more padding on the top of that. We'll go back up to spacing just above. Push it down just a little bit more. There we go. That's great. OK, but we don't want it sitting there in the middle of our website. I want it to be on the right hand side. So I'm going to go over to advanced. Down to position. And I'm going to change it from default. To fixed. And it's disappeared to the top left here. And as you can see, we've got a little matrix down here. You can have top left, middle, right, middle, bottom. See, it's down in our bottom corner right there. It's in the middle right there. I want it not quite as far down as that. I want it somewhere around here. So I'm going to put it up on the top right. And let's roll this back up because it's going to disappear under the menu because the menu's got a very high Z index now and I'll talk about the Z index in a moment so okay I want it so it's under the menu there so let's roll it up to the top if we roll down a bit we've got a vertical offset horizontal offset I want to take it down so I'm going to slide this to the right and you'll see it appear under the menu right there in a minute there it is and I want to place it just about there that's great and I want it to be a little off from the side. So we've got horizontal offset there. I'm going to roll that up a little bit. Perfect. Great. So we're right at the top of the site. And as we roll down, it's going to be on the top of everything. Great. So our little white background's working fine there. I was worried about losing it on anything pink like that. But that's fine. It's working just great. So we're good to go. But if you do this and you roll over something and suddenly it disappears behind it, like it does with the header there, you can adjust the Z index. We've got Z index right here. And what the Z index is, is pull things forward or backwards on the site. For instance, if you had two overlapping things and this had a Z index of 20 and this had a Z index of 30, you wouldn't see this because it would be behind the higher number. So if you have that problem, just roll your Z index up to a nice high number so it sits on top of whatever's causing the problem there. And you can type in a ridiculously high number if you want to, and it should fix your problems. Common to most Divi modules, if you delete it, it'll just go back to the default. So if you've done something and you want to change it back, just delete it, it'll go back to the default. 
Okay, and we're good to go. Let's save our changes. We'll save the page changes. And exit the visual builder. And there's our little button. When they click on it, it'll take them to the cart. When we roll down the page, it'll stay exactly where it is. Fantastic. Make sure it's going to work. And there's our cart page. Let's pop back. That's great. And you can use the same principle as we've done today here with a great plugin called Divi Supreme Modules. And I'll demonstrate how you can do this and click on this and have a pop up cart on the page itself. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.